Hello my friends, this is Wolfgang with my channel Tools for Ascension. And my gift to you today is the guided meditation that will help you transcend the matrix. Well, by getting in touch with your own zero point in your heart, which will gradually facilitate an alternate view of reality in you. The meditation will start at uh, this time, you know, on the video. Uh, but first, let me give you backstory about the matrix, about mass mind, 3D consciousness, and a lot more. Prime your mind with some more wild ideas, huh? So, I have been checking recently on what type of burden and resistances and obstacles uh, are still affecting my clients. I'm taking an inventory, so to say, like how much, you know, of our suffering, you know, for instance, comes from our own thought forms or our, our own emotions, you know, or from our karma, or is there a lot of spiritual sabotage there? And, and you know, I use the pendulum and then just get a percentage and it's uh, quite accurate. And I have to say, uh, to my amazement, that the outstanding negative factor, you know, with my regular clients, you know, is mass mind. You know, not karma, not spiritual sabotage, it's mass mind, or you may say, the matrix. So the word matrix does not come from the movie matrix, but it is derived from the Latin word mater, means mother. And in the uh, gem and mineral world, um, the uh, matrix is the base onto which, like a crystal, uh, grows. Uh, like here, you know, the dark side, that is the matrix onto which, you know, then this crystalline structure grew. This is an apophyllite. Here, so they um, grow in water pockets, but then the dark thing, this is the original um, mother onto which all the other um, lattices, you know, in, or atoms or molecules attached in the lattice form. So it is the base of everything. So very deep down. <clears throat> so with this assessment of mine, of course, there's always the possibility that I'm going down the deep end uh, with a, without a hand basket. <laughs> but then it, it also makes sense because I always woke, you know, focus on, on clear and karma, like uh, spiritual sabotage, etc. You know, with my clients. So now, with mass mind, uh, that's a more tricky thing uh, because you know your personality is very much conditioned, you know, by personal experiences, you know, interacting, you know, with mass mind. You know, the world, so to say, you know, which makes us, you know, conditioned, you know, souls. You know? Um, we're spirit beings, and now here we get in condition. You know, we are becoming like a bitch of the system <laughs> in other worlds. Like, no, roll over for a paycheck, and our advertisements will tell you exactly what makes you happy, you know. We even give you choices. So, in, in one sense, you know, we are all conditioned, you know, in our behaviors. You know, we are all programmed. You know, ergo programs are, are what we see, you know, in the Matrix movie. You know, uh, they move around as the blonde or the guy in the business suit, you know. Or like the good dog that brings home the bacon. 
On another level, you know, the world of hard objects, you know, and the other elements, and the other elements, you know, that we are experiencing, you know, as solid, you know, and even apply the laws of, of Newton's physics to, you know, like uh, no two objects can occupy, you know, the same space at the same time, you know. That's why you have car accidents, or you know the whole billiard ball, you know atomic model, you know with atoms, kinetic energy, etc. You know that seems to be all an illusion. You know ultimately, what we are experiencing as solid uh, are just vast amounts of space, you know, with certain force field properties to it. I mean, this is kind of you know, the higher end of, of physics, you know. So, so in, from this perspective, you know, the material energy, you know, that we consider as solid, you know, is hollow, so to say. Um, just like, you know, in the world in, in the Matrix movie, we you know it's, it's just all digital, it's like pixels in the end or surface. <laughs> You know, surface rendering. Uh, uh, but uh, the this uh, matrix, you know, is also you know a servant to manifest ideas. You know, the clay of reality, so to say. You know, it seems solid. You know, when you're in it, but when you're above it, uh, maybe you could walk through the wall. You know, and there are many abductees, etc. I have experienced this, and um, so the Hin Buddhist and you know Hinduists, you know, they um, would definitely say, "Oh, yeah, that's Maya." <laughs> you know, the world is basically you know hologram. You know, um, and sometimes the, you know the physics engine. And that's something you know gamers can relate to. You know, it can be taken over. You know, doing extreme states of consciousness. Yeah, I mean, you know, we all heard about you know Yuri Geller's you know spoon bending. Uh, that would be an example of that. You know, and you know those uh, things where the laws of Newton's physics you know are changed are so-called miracles. And you know, in, in Sanskrit, these are called cities. And, uh, yeah. and uh, so, but ultimately, you know, those traditions, you know, say that each dimension or where you are, you know, has a different way of perceiving energy. And, and um, you can even. And so they own, you know, they have their own kind of illusory energy. So I mean, uh, in our world, the, the comparison would be, for instance, you can see if somebody is happy, you know, from uh, the physical face, you know, the expression, their body uh, language. But then also, you know, from a fourth dimensional, from an astral perspective, you know, you can feel that she. Or maybe even see that she, you know, and you feel, let's say, as an empath, oh, they have happy cheese, oh, or they're suppressed or depressed or uh, angry. You know, even if this mace is maybe smiling, you know, you can feel the anger. So this would be more like um, astral perception. So, but on every level, you no, know, there is a different uh, illusion, type of illusion. I mean, it's just a display. Uh, like you have a pie chart on a computer, you know, for certain to display certain things. You know, it doesn't mean the pie chart is reality. So, in the same way, um, you know, um, things are displayed to us. <laughs> so, every dimension has their own Maya or matrix. So, uh, you're moving, you know, from one illusion to another as you're moving, you know, through the dimension higher and higher. But when you like higher up, you know, you can look down into the other dimension and can see, you know, the illusions of the lower ones. I mean, animals, 
you know, how many of us do not get amused, you know, about animals, you know, um, you're so much smarter around them, you know, so a cat can hardly resist um, a laser beam on the wall, you know, so, uh, <laughs> um, you know, uh, so we have a very, very different, you know, understanding of reality than those beings. And to think that we are on top of the food chain, you know, of this, of intelligence, uh, I think would be quite arrogant. <laughs> Anyhow, yet on another perspective, on the consciousness, you know, level, you know, so the, the matrix that you see, you know, is a rendering of your own mind. You know, the world that you see is a rendering of your own mind. Let me explain this to you. So the input for the rendering, you know, comes through your five senses, you know, that assemble this world around you into a coherent piece. Well, you can say, yeah, my touch, sense of touch, you know, that is coherent and also maybe auditory. You might be aware, you know, of everything going around you uh, constantly. You probably filter out a lot. But then with your vision, you know, um, that's, you know, more outstanding. So, you know, you have an area in your eye that's 10 degree that is focused. This is sharp. And the rest is just pretty much blurry imagery, you know. So you can't just focus over there and then read, you know, text over there. You know, you have high resolution, you know, all just in a really small, like a tailor lens, you know, effect. But when you think about this world that you're seeing there, you know, it seems to be all in focus. But your eyes are just little scanners, <laughs> you know, they go. And, uh, you know, when, when you meet a person, generally you go from face, to, 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 you know, down, scan their whole body, you know, see it's maybe a possible mate or something like this. But, you know, uh, everything is being scanned. So there's a whole level of psychology you know, that studies eye movement, you know, even as a good artist, you know, you're supposed to be aware of eye movement, you know, seeing how it affects the composition and so on. And um, <laughs> so uh, my point being, you know, um, you like scanning with your eyes all the time, but this world around you, you know, seems to be completely coherent. You know, you're not aware that you're just stitching scan lines together. It's all being filled in automatically. So, you know, we are seeing basically a model of the world, a representation of the world in our mind. You know? And so for some of you, this might be news. Uh, you always, you know, thought that, you know, you're seeing the world out there. Mm -hmm. It's just a representation in your own mind. Um, so, but that is not a, that basic concept is just a really old concept, you know, in the Bhagavad Gita, you know, the big Hindu epic thousands of years ago, you know, this was explained. And also, you know, more recent, like uh, this German philosopher from the 1830s, you know, at that time, Arthur Schopenhauer, and check out that guy's haircut, you know, you can't tell me they weren't punk. So, definitely a kind of a rebel. So, uh, he had this famous book that I like, you know, The World as Will and Imagination. You know, he basically said, you know, what you're seeing of the world is just the will, you know, let's say the will to live, and in the tree, you know, you see the will to get sun, so that's why the branches grow. Mm -hmm or the will to have water, that's why the cactus, you know, has all these, you know, uh, like uh, adaptations. And, uh, but whatever, you know, you see of the world, it is in your own personal imagination. And then he also describes, you know, that your perception, you know, is always, you know, intentional. And of course, also culture directed, and we're going to get a little bit later to culture. So let's talk about intentional. So let's say we're going, you know, through a forest. And if I'm a businessman, I'm like, you know, so we have two hectares here, and, you know, this is maybe, 
and uh, two years this could be cut this cost that much money so you start calculating profit etc you know as an artist uh, you go through the same forest and you look hmm, you know look at these light the way this goes falls to the trees and hears the sound and you know he sees uh, patterns and beauty you know in details or in the whole composition now a thief you know many think <laughs> Uh, maybe there's here some wood um, that we could use, or there are places where I could hide or hide my, my loot. You know, so basically every person in the same reality, you know, um, just picks out, you know, a different aspect of it. You know, to, to drive this idea a little further, uh, you know, let's compare ourselves to the Inuit. You know, the people called Eskimos, so... Uh, in the northern part so we are like from the normal world <laughs> you know so we for instance we now sticky snow and, and powder snow and slush and yellow snow and maybe then the worst of course you know black ice you know he spoils it for everybody so that's you know pretty much our knowledge of snow then the inuit you know, they used to differentiate, you know, between around 150, give or take, different types of snow. So, the perception, you know, again, is very culture-oriented. You know, so this is something we have to be aware of. You know, um, how we just, you know, um, can... Um, become very, very perceptive about aspects that other people, you know, have barely any idea about. Uh, so, also, not say in the Western culture and education system, you know, this is a very, you know, materialistic society that we are living in here, and, um, you know, which makes like any uh, metaphysical or maybe you know occult topics of course you know occult of course supposed to be hidden like astrology you know taboo you know by ridiculing it you know and of course not funding it like you know not funding research at the university if you try to research this and quantify this you know which is the proper process you know of science you know no prejudgment you know they just do experiments you know, look at the facts and then try to explain them with a theory, you know, and then see if the theory applies and can be repeated. So, but, you know, if you're trying to research, you know, um, some of these phenomena, you know, you're going to get um, blackballed, you know, and um, have to work somewhere else. So, in other cultures, you know, this is all about culture right now, a lot more attention, you know, uh, at defining or mapping, you know, more subtle realms, you know, of reality, like, for instance, the astral plane, you know, or other spiritual dimensions are there, you know, and that is reflected in the language, you know, well, I mean, for instance, Sanskrit, you know, I, I mean, I know more about Sanskrit uh, than others, uh, but I, you know, I studied Latin, I have the great Latino. <laughs> I'm German, you know, this is a foreign language for me, English, so I have some kind of understanding about language. But, um, you know, there are a, a lot of ideas expressed in the Sanskrit language, where in English, there is not really, you know, an equivalent for this kind of like the snow thing. You know? And, of course, you know, there are certain words, you know, symbols, you know, in the occult, esoteric, Western traditions, too. Uh, but, you know, then to find out, you know, what that really means, you know, you pretty much have to drink the Kool-Aid, you know, of that organization, you know, to get that knowledge or, you know, spend half a lifetime, you know, reading expensive books. So... The point of being here, if you do not have a word for something, you cannot think or talk about it. And let me explain this again. If you do not have a word about it or for it, something, you cannot think or talk about it. So, if you do not have a word 
or something, you cannot think or talk about it. Yeah, so with any <laughs> paradigm, you know, like Western astrology, Vedic astrology, Chinese astrology, you know, different ideas and personality traits, you know, are mapped out, you know, and can be discussed, you know, once there is a common understanding, you know, about the archetypes, you know, and their definition, you know, so what is, you know, a Scorpio? You know, what does that stand for? You know, uh, what does pig in Chinese astrology stand for? <laughs> you know, um, these are symbols and understanding. And then, yeah, you can say, well, this guy is a dragon. You know, you better watch it. You know, uh, or this one is a Scorpio. You know, you better watch it. So, uh, <laughs> um, so the more of these languages, you know, you understand, the more concepts, you know, of reality you have. So, you know, each system, you know, has a different worldview, you know, and all of them, you know, they're all kind of accurate, you know, though also, you know, being huge abstractions, you know, I mean, all, every system, I mean, mathematics, you know, being the biggest abstraction, the, you know, Abstraction, yes. You know, they all describe the same reality, but just like the blind man, you know, yeah. they're describing, you know, um, the same elephant, you know, one has a tail, one, you know, the leg, and so they all describe a different aspect, you know, from their own little personal perspective. And they're all kind of correct. So, now to another step. <laughs> So, when we compare animals, you know, with humans, so we can see that in general, animals are born with a natural skin, skill set, you know, right out of the box, so to say. You know, they're called instincts, you know. Um, so, uh, the, the drawback, you know, with instinct is um, that they're very specialized you know, at what they're doing, you know. Uh, well, some are really multi-purpose, for instance, you know, rats, you know, or sparrows, you know, they are, they're, they're very common everywhere. You know? uh, but the more, you know, you're specialized like an anteater, <laughs> you know, if anything changes, you know, you're not part of the common gene pool anymore. So, but in humans, you know, are less pro pre-programmed, you know, and have to be programmed, you know, uh, to function. So, by culture. You know? and the culture tells you on how to live, even on what to live for, you know, and what to look for. Uh, so, they tell you, you know, um, what is a good wife, what is a good job, you know, and what is a happy life. And so, humans are really like a multi-purpose tool. You know, we can swim, we can dive, we can climb a rope, you know, we can jump, you know, in our hands, you know, they can be conditioned to play Mozart, you know, on a piano, you know, or to break ribs, you know, by a skilled martial artist, you know. So, the culture, you know, of a population would be the zeitgeist, you know, mass mind, the matrix, you know, in all aspect of Maya, you know, of illusion, you know, because you cannot think outside, you know, your language, you know, or your culture, or your box, or even your sense perception. <laughs> so, the mass mind of humanity, you know, would also include all the karmic emotions, you know, and other energies that come as baggage, you know, from the suffering, you know, and other conditioning, you know, um, like basically, you know, the carrot and the stick, you know, of life, you know, the plain old, you know, Darwinism. 
you know, there's a big burden, you know, of, of suffering and tragedy, you know, from life on people. I mean, I'm from Europe, you know. I mean, there's two world wars raking over Europe and, uh, you know, leaving people in places devastated, you know, emotionally devastated. The physical has been cleaned up quite fast, but the emotions, they are still there. So, in a way, you know, Darwinism is real, in, in my humble opinion, you know. If, but it is the stress test of a species, you know, not the cause of the creation. You know, systems are just too sophisticated, you know, to be created by random mutation. I mean, any decent biologist, you know, that knows about, you know, the sophistication of eyes of certain things, you know, they can't just, you know, jumble this together. Uh, so, so in, you know, but the stress test, yeah, you know, you have something there and then you, you know, you run it for 20,000 miles, you know, so you run it through the jungle <laughs> and see, you know, how well they're doing, you know. So in, so in my opinion, you know, source and does not micromanage you know, creation, you know, but defers or farms out, you know, all the details, you know, to his contractors, you know. There's the creators, you know, of these realities, you know, it's, it's not source. I mean, you know, he kind of supervises for sure, you know, if he wants to. <laughs> You know, but it's play. He just like go with it, roll with it. You know? And so, this creator beings. You know, there are creator beings that uh, that are facilitators. You know, so for in Hinduism, you know, um, Brahma, Lord Brahma, you know, would be one of these beings. Now, on a different level, you know, uh, the Elohim. You know, in Christianity. You know, we're kind of a lower, we're lower on the chain of creation, you know, um, of the, you know, uh, Adam type human. You know? and, and creation here is also, I have to say the wrong term, you know, with Adam. You know, with Adam that took something that was already there and then they domesticated it, you know, through, you could say, DNA manipulation, you know, in, in similar ways. I mean, we don't using DNA manipulation, you know, on dogs, uh, but in similar ways, you know, human transformed the wolf, you know, into his dog, you know, and, and the wolf and then the dog has a knowledge of good and evil now. <laughs> so seeing from that perspective, you know, we are all creator beings, you know, whether it's, you know, we create babies, you know, that would be more the female aspect, you know, or whether we are making policies about babies, you know, that would then be, you know, male, old men, that went those policies. So, in, in my humble opinion, you know, so we have creationism, you know, uh, where a lot of beings, you know, have their fingers in the DNA pie. Or should I say, in the primordial you know, soup? So, now there are religious systems <laughs> that try to transcend mass mind. You no, know, general principles is like mindfulness. So you pay a lot of you know attention and don't just doodle you know along and. Uh, also, no mind or no thought, you know, I have, you know, videos on how to, you know, stop the inner dialogue, and there are several methods I describe. Uh, one of those methods, you know, of, um, you know, going to a, a no mind or focus the mind is a mantra meditation. I have also a video on this, you know, how to, you know, properly do this to get the maximum effect. You know, for it, and I would recommend if you do mantras even for years, you still learn from, from this video. Right. And let me know if you knew everything I was talking about this video. I would be interested. <laughs> so, uh, 
And, you know, there are your methods like stopping your mind by taking your eyes out of focus, you know, and, and others. So, uh, but now, this was just, a, you know, all, you know, a little mental, you know, a rundown, you know, have to keep this one engaged, you know, uh, you're not just bumbling fools. So, let's see us, you know, actually how Mars mind affects you on an individual level. All right, so just sit back, be mm -hmm. nice and comfortable. And if you are, uh, you know, on a podcast, and <laughs> you're driving or operating heavy machinery, I strongly recommend that you, you know, put on some music or something else, because this is going to space you out, and it's going to be very dangerous to continue. It's worse than drinking booze, I would say. So, you close your eyes, and first of all, you know, we ask for the highest divine guidance, you know, that is aligned with absolute source of us. And we also ask that we all get all the help to transcend, you know, whatever is outdated, you know, with our human 3D mass mind, you know, and bring in the new, you know, and improve, you know, version of four-dimensional and five-dimensional or even higher consciousness. And that it is fun and pretty, pretty pleased with blessing on top, you know, and let's be completely safe. You know, that no service to self side, you know, can uh, manipulate us, you know, or attack us, or take revenge with us in any way. You know? And uh, we ask that we, you know, have a really good time, you know, doing this. And even if you, you know, fall asleep, that, um, you know, our high self, you know, can decide um, which of the suggestions it agrees with, and that there will be purification. And now, um, start focusing on your breath, mm -hmm. and imagine that you're pulling in, you know, from the Earth Goddess, you know, a lot of love, it's just like air, you know, through your feet, through your legs, into your heart, and also through your root chakra, you know, into your heart. You know, deep inhale, you know, you know, like to use your breath like a leaf blower, and smile like an idiot. And then you send, you know, your love back into the earth, Mm -hmm. And we ask our spirit guides and the loving angels of Source, you know, to clear any resistances in us that disconnect us from our divine aspect and that disconnect us with this Source as much as possible. Now, Amen, Amen, Amen. And keep on just, you know, pulling in the love from the earth pushing it down, and you breathe really, really strongly. You want to feel the air flowing through your nostril, and you want to have your mouth closed, unless you're sitting outside in nature. Then it's different. But still, I would only in imagination breathe through my chakras. Okay. And now I'll pull in as much love from the Earth Mother into your heart. And on the exhale, send it out the top of the head. And you're trying to get as high as possible out the head. So two yards, six feet. That's optimum. <laughs> and then this energy automatically will fall down in your force field around you and then come back and be recycled, you know, through your spine on the next inhale. But keep on pumping it up from the earth through your spine out the top of the head and smile like an idiot. In, all the way in, and then all the way out. Smile, 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 smile. And if you're getting a buzz, any tingling, 
that is a very good sign. That means that there is a higher vibration and that there is more good chi in that area. So when the top of the head starts tingling, that means your crown chakra is starting to open. It gets activated. If your feet start to tingle, well, then your foot chakra is getting activated. If your back starts to tingle, you know you're having more energy there, more chi there. So, and now you focus on pulling in the love from the heavenly realms and into, you know, your heart. On the inhale and on the exhale, you send your love all the way to the heavens. And we asked the divine protector beings, of course, source primarily, but then also representations for protection. Uh, like, in, depending on culture, there would be Archangel Michael, there would be Lord Nasingha Dave, you know, or Lord Shiva, or others, depending, or Kali, uh, depending on, you know, your preferences. And we ask, you know, those protector beings to just, you know, erect this beautiful column of love and light around you. The big force field that can only be penetrated by love and light and that will reject, you know, any low, low uh, hostile vibrations or intent and actually even transmute any darkness in ourselves and turn it into light. Please do so now. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. We ask that everything that comes in and from this session here is going to be for the highest good in divine harmony with the most benevolent outcomes. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now um, we will, you know, ask. Uh, I will show you, you know, a way to communicate with it in a yes or no form. It's a very easy and uh, it's quite accurate and uh, you can be quite neutral with this. So when we, um, you know, ask later on your higher consciousness, uh, you know, the question and the answer it would be yes, this would be a flow of energy from the heart to the head. And it would feel like this. Okay, so um, for instance, you know, if you would ask, you know, for example, you know, should you meditate more? Um, and then the answer would be something like this. That would mean, you know, you should meditate. Uh, let's say, and a no uh, would be uh, a flow of energy from the heart to the feet. Uh, that would be feeling like a downer, would feel like this. And let's see, um, let's ask, you know, if you would ask your high self, would you, you should um, start expanding your mind by consuming heroin. Uh, let's see, uh, you know, please tell us now, Amen. Um, uh, let me just, um, you know, make this fit feel like this again. All right, I hope you got that. <laughs> but of course, the answers, they come also in images, in symbols, in memories or in concepts, you know, or in full sentences. Do not limit yourself. You know, this is just one way, you know, a very simple way, you know, um, to uh, get answers. Okay, so now uh, just focus on pulling in the love from heaven and earth into your heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and expand your, the aura of love around your heart. And so let's just see, you know, how this works for you. And I mean, we're not buying a car here, so it's not that important that your answers are completely accurate. But I would say in the whole, you will get a pretty good idea of what is going on. You know, with Mars Mind or the Matrix and you. 
So, and now, you know, we address, you know, this aspect of you that is all knowing, you know, that is your soul that is connected with absolute source. You know, it, the knowingness comes from the connection to absolute source. You know, we are not the ones so smart. <laughs> so we ask this highest, I call this aspect, you know, this uh, PR person between you and source. You know, I call this high self. So let's ask your high self, you know, how much, uh, yeah, is uh, very much of your suffering, you know, caused by spiritual sabotage? Yes or no. Now let's ask if a lot of your suffering is caused by karma. That would mean, of course, you hurt somebody in a past lifetime, they hurt you back in this lifetime. This would be one of those things. So, as much of your suffering caused by karma, yes or no. And now let's ask, is much of your suffering caused by the curses of others, yes or no. And now let's ask, is much of your suffering caused by mass mind, yes or no? And let's ask, you know, how much of your suffering is actually caused by illusions? You know, we think, you know, things are one way, but in reality they are a different way. So how much of your suffering is caused by illusion? Lots or little? You know, so... <laughs> Let's just ask, is most of your suffering caused by negative thinking? Yes or no? Now let's ask, you know, is much of your suffering caused by the negative toxic emotions from others. I mean, you could be going through a divorce or, you know, you have an arch enemy, you know, uh, that hates your guts, ex-boyfriend you know, or his girlfriend hating you. So, uh, how much, you know, of your suffering is caused by the toxic emotions from Now let's also ask, is a lot of your suffering caused by the fear from the mass mind of humans? Yes or no? And I mean, if you're living next to a slaughterhouse, <laughs> uh, or maybe even an airport, you know, um, there's a lot of fear. Those, so uh, you know, I'm just giving you a warning. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you know, and how much you know, asked is a lot of your fear that you may have, you know, caused from the mass mind of animals, yes or no. Okay, now let's ask a very different question. And, you know, the answers may be just a feeling, you know, but it can also be in a word or in a symbol. So we want to know, you know, the three worst emotions 
<laughs> it affects you from mass mind. So let's ask your high self. So what's the worst emotion that you're picking up from mass mind for you? Alright, and now ask what's the second worst uh, mass uh, emotion from mass mind that's affecting you? And now ask what the third worst you know, uh, emotion from, from mass mind that's affecting you. Okay, so now let's just get an idea, you know, of, you know, um, how much, you know, of your suffering is coming basically from negative projections, you know, about realities. You know, I give you an example, let's say, you know, from the movies, you know, most of those aliens, you know, are monsters instead of cute little turtle guys, right? So that would, you know, create, oh, you see alien, you know, you think, boo, you know, all these horrible <laughs> things, <laughs> how they treated humanity from the movies comes up. You know, so you're preconditioned, you know, through fear to aliens, for instance, you know, simple thing. And of course, you know, this could come through all kinds of, you know, brainwashing, you know, from movies. You know, I call this negative projections. You know, so if you see a lot of disaster movies, you know, well, this creates fear about the future, right? So this would be, uh -huh. so, you know, let's ask, are you suffering, you know, a lot from negative projections, you know, from the mass media, yes or no? Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, you know, that's also asked, is a lot of your suffering coming from a misdirection, you know, of your perception, you know, from the mass media. Yes or no? Now let's ask whether a lot of your suffering, you know, comes from the wrong goals that you set in your life, you know, due to the manipulation, you know, of mass media. I mean, it could also be your mother that wants you to be a lawyer. <laughs> you know, but uh, let's just see, you know, mass media uh, or mass mind. Let's call it mass mind. So mom is part of mass mind. You know, you're becoming a lawyer. So how much of your suffering is caused by mass mind? you know, determine your goals, you know, which are not actually your goals. Now let's ask how much of your suffering is caused by the wrong mass mind family structure for you. And let's see, and how much of your suffering is caused by bad habits promoted by mass mind? You know, many videos or movies, you know, you see the heroes, you know, chugging booze all the time. <laughs> or um, the cops, you know, always the hero cop is always a rebel cop, you know, breaking the law himself, uh, being a bad boy, you know, roughing up witnesses, and, tempering with evidence, no, it's okay if it's for a good cause, you know, becoming a vigilante, no, it's all right, you know, so these are definitely bad habits promoted by mass mind, if you ask me, so let's ask, you know, whether you actually, you know, suffering quite a lot, you know, due to these bad habits that you thought were cool. And let's see, and how much of your suffering is called by, let's call them mass mind food, right? 
you, you sit and watching TV and then suddenly, you know, this sizzling, you know, is presented to you. you know, close up, swirling like a dream out of paradise, Schlaraffenland. So and now you're wondering, you're eating too much. So how much of the suffering is caused by mass white food? And how much of your suffering is caused by mass mind work, where you would be a lot happier, you know, if you would be thinking outside the box. And now let's ask, now this is going to be a hard one for some of you, how much of your suffering is caused by gaming? Definitely, you know, a lot of people devote a lot of their time to gaming, internet gaming, not even talking about gambling, you know, just gaming. How much of your suffering is coming from that? And how much of your suffering is caused by porn? And let's see, and how much suffering is caused by 3D love ideas? And let me just be clear here, you know, it's maybe when you expect that you after get married right into the sunset, oh, and it's gonna get even better. Uh, you know, that's probably the wrong projection. <laughs> yeah, no. um, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's the big illusion, for instance, you know, so, um, but there are, you know, definitely a lots of concepts, you know, that uh, maybe could be improved. Hey, we don't know, even if you get one idea, great, you know, so let's just see. Uh, so how much of your suffering, you know, is caused by, you know, the wrong ideas about love? Mm. Okay, so next question, you know, how much of your suffering is caused by illusional mind programming from educational authorities? Yeah, I mean, I look at it, man, I mean, I had educational authorities messing 20 years with my mind, you know, especially in the formative years. <laughs> well. Now let's ask, you know, how much of your suffering is coming from programming from the mass media? And now asked how much of your suffering is coming from watching the news. And when you ask me about um, mass mind, uh, timekeeping is a big part of mass mind. Uh, most people are not aware of that. You know, I mean, our calendar has been changed. You know, into the, what's the Gregorian calendar, and you know there are astrologists, very capable astrologists, that say this was uh, really very detrimental, putting us out of sync with the natural rhythms. And so let's see, you know, how much of your suffering, and let's get the percentage if you can, is caused from false timekeeping and the patterning that arises from this. Let's just ask to get answers in percent. And how much of your suffering is coming from outdated, animalistic, reptilian, ego programming? And how much 
of your suffering is coming from a mass mind intruding, you know, your dreams. Imagine this mass mind is this ocean of emotions and ideas, and you just sitting in there. You know, you are just part of it, you know, in, in this emotional weather that's coming your way and going over you certain thought forms. So how much are your dreams, you know, affected by these things flowing over you? Right. And now let's ask, how much, you know, is your suffering caused by illusionary or predatory mind programming, you know, from your religious system? You know, that maybe, you know, give you excessive guilt or put you, you know, into some kind of a restraint that's just like not really in alignment with you. Now this is the big one, and let's ask how much is mass mind separating you from source? And with source I mean God, but you know God is like such a box of people's ideas, so I prefer source. Let's ask one more time. So how much is mass mind, you know, separating you from source? So the next thing is maybe also part of mass mind or mass consciousness, because, you know, I don't consider that, you know, natural. So it's part of the human world. Um, so, it's this us, you get a percentage idea, you know, or just the worse, you know, or better. So, let's just ask, so how much does, you know, um, microwave, you know, um, affect you in a negative way? Microwave radiation. And now how much does cell phone radiation, you know, affect you in a negative way? And how much does Wi-Fi radiation affect you in a negative way? How much does Bluetooth radiation affect you in a negative way? And how much do scalar waves like HARP affect you in a negative way? And how much do hostile satellite transmissions affect you in a negative way? And how much do other information transmissions frequencies that are intended to hurt us affect us in a negative way? You know, stuff that we have no idea that that technology exists. And now, so you have an idea, you know, what has been going on with you. And of course, you know, we want to have the solution. And so what I suggest, you know, you either pray to source, to absolute source, you know, the absolute creator of everything, nobody beyond. Or if you're Hindu, you know, I suggest... You also, you know, you turn to Shiva in the aspect of Trimurti as the, you know, the clearer or transmuter, you know, of the old, you know, bringing in the new, you know, so that the new can be created. 
you know so that's this thing you know clearing out our dated concept so if you're christian or other you know spirituality i would suggest source <laughs> mm -hmm. as hindu lord shiva so we address i address all of them all the divine aspects of source that are merciful you know to help you know so we address you know the merciful aspect of source or of lord shiva to please clear all distortions and outdated concept you know, regarding the issues that we have mentioned before from us you know, and bring in the new and better concepts you know through downloads and other fun realizations you know to whatever way but you know we ask permission you know that we be updated you know in the best way possible we, but we want to have it fun Amen, Amen, Amen. And this will then manifest, you know, in your life. Make sure you agree, you know, do your Amen. Yes, ho, give consent, very important. Smile, 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 you know, you're in front of Source or Lord Shiva. And now, let's go deeper. And smile and focus on your heart just give attention to your heart mm -hmm. and you can just lightly imagine no don't need too much detail that there is something like a stargate in your heart you know just in that movie stargate sg1 you know also the series you know just the nice round stargate you know where your heart is mm -hmm. And when you open the stargate, it, there is a worm behind it. It opens to a worm that connects you straight to the love of source, to absolute source. It just cuts through all the other dimensions, you know, all the other layers, all the BS, so to say, all the red tape. It just cuts right through. This is what wormholes do best. And now, you know, Please, 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 please smile. Don't embarrass me in front of source. Uh -huh. No reason to have a tough face here. Smile. Uh -huh. And on the inhale, you take that, you pull that love from source through that wormhole to the surface of your heart. Smile like you need it and you start pulling this up you like free money. On the exhale, you just expand that in, that love in your body. And you start sending that love on the exhale to your feet, into your right foot, down the leg. Smile even sweeter. And we ask the most potent spirit guides to clear any resistances that are still there in us to fully access the stargate and to the love of souls whether it's vows or technologies hostile technologies frequency fences curses uh, visualizations you know, astral devices entities you know please clear all those sabotage or resistances that are there even trauma you know, that separate us from source. Amen. Amen. Now feel your legs, Mr. Slur. Deep breathing, smile like an alien, bring that love up to the surface of your heart. Now start sending it into your right arm, all the way to the fingertips. And we are so grateful 
to source. That she's giving us his love or her love and mercy. Now start feeling your left arm with this love. Pulling in as much love and mercy from source. You can also see it light as light. I kind of feel it more. I mean, I see it too, but I feel it. And now just send this up and down your spine. Well, bring it to the surface and then just send it. You know, first down your spine, root yourself into the earth. <laughs> Give Mother Earth a cut of that sauce, love. Sometimes, you know, emotions clear, pain clears. This is, they call clears, this happens. You just let it flow through you. And smile again. And we ask that any pain that's in us, that it be clear. This is love. Now push that source love up into your spine on the exhale, to the head. But first, <clears throat> you start fanning that into the shoulders. <clears throat> and it feels as if a heavy bird is being lifted off your shoulders. Hmm. Now you start pushing that love from source from the world now into your neck and just push it around like a lighthouse beam 360 around your neck clearing all the slavery colors on you all the trauma from past lifetimes from strangulation Hanging. Oh. Throat cutting. Oh. Garrots. Sticking sand or rattles into your throat. Or other things. And now send this love into your head. Into your right brain. Your female aspect. Now send the love over your right brain to the left brain. And 
And now send this love from source out the top of the head. Trying to build an area like a helmet around you. That's let's say three feet a meter in diameter. You know? Like this. <laughs> big big bubble of source love. And now you take that source love that you bring in up to the surface and pump this into a bubble. You know, that becomes like a golden egg around you that's filled with love, nourishment. Now imagine somebody that you really love, part of you. You know, you take as much source love to the surface. And on the exhale, you send it to the heart of the world. The loved one in front of you. Give it three blasts. As for somebody that you really don't like to be in front of you. And give that one three blasts. And just say, I forgive you. Think I forgive you. See how that feels. There's a strong emotions that come up. You just let them flow through you. Uh, express them. So this axis, this stargate, I call it, into the heart. You might understand that as a zero. It's the balance point, zero point. You know, I think where we're supposed to reside, communing with source. And let me explain this more to you. So, from here, from the heart, the zero point, we can access all possible. Many of you are probably, you know, familiar with timelines. The first information about this was came in with the channeling of death. About parallel timelines, it's become quite popular. 
So, timelines means possibilities. You know, if you meet this person, and let's say start a relationship with him, how would this go? And then if you don't go with this person, how would this go? So you have two timelines. And, you know, then maybe you get pregnant with this one, and maybe not pregnant, so you got again two timelines. Possibilities. Now, when you're focused in your head instead of in your heart, mm -hmm. we become more like a space cadet, space case, you know, you're not grounded. And a lot of possible experiences will never manifest, you know, due to this bias of being up there, you know, and just keep on pumping this love, you know, keep on pumping up while I'm talking. You know, sorry, I have to talk. It's difficult with the breath. So, like we make, you know, when we are in our head, so to say, and in our crown chakra, so we might be more focused on our maybe glorious past life as a divine, gorgeous priestess, you know, than uh, making the bad, you know, or keeping our body fit, you know, or staying away from all those all-you-can-eat buffet challenges, right? But then, you know, there may be more bias towards a lack of groundedness, you know, which in case, you know, could result in a feeble body, you know, or an inability to manage your physical life, you know, like holding on to a job or paying your bills, or paying your bills. So, you know, there is a bias and it, you know, limits your timelines, your possibilities. Now, when you focus more on your lower chakras, then your possible timelines will be more focused on issues, let's say, of survival, issues of the flesh. And I mean from the barbecue flesh to the, we like to look at mammalian glands and reproductive systems flesh. So, you know, it would be more a, a carnal life, a materialistic life. And then all those possible, you know, higher timelines are already, you know, out the windows by default. So by residing in your heart at the present time, you know, you in connecting through source, through the Stargate visualization, that puts you to a zero point, you know, a baseline from where you can access, you know, all possible timelines, you know, a balance point. So this freedom, you know, to choose, you know, comes from the fact that at that time, you know, one is transcendental, you know, to external influences. You know, emotionally, you know, you just get nourished from that love, you know, and it doesn't really matter, you know, that much, you know, um, how other people really feel. Actually, the, the point being, if you feel like this, everybody around you is going to be in bliss. I've seen it, you know. <laughs> you know, in Sri Lanka, you know, I was like in, so blissing out once, and everybody around me was just smiling. <laughs> like everybody in the bus around me was smiling. So I'm, of course, unless you sit in a burning car, you know, or, you know, are submerged in water for an undetermined time, you know, that's more difficult to answer. So, so this love experience, you know, from source, you know, is hard to beat, you know, this enjoyment of material things. So, of course, as long as our animal necessities are taken care of, you know, Otherwise, you know, hunger mostly wins. 
you know. So, in experiencing a love from source, you know, makes you independent, you know, from the getting your love from ordinary people, you know, who most of the time, after some time, fail to supply properly. Yeah, yeah. big problem, big, big problem. You know? You know? Actually, ordinary people, <laughs> you know, will be coming to you for love, you know, not, not that way. Maybe, maybe too. So, uh, again now, you know, again, you know, make sure you have your eyes closed and still, you know, communing with source. And so let's say, you know, you pull on the inhale this love through the stargate into your heart. And now, on the exhale, you send your love down the stargate down the worm to source. And of course we know that source doesn't need your love, you know. Just like, you know, when you as a kid gave daddy, you know, a candy, I mean, he didn't need your candy, but it's good for you, you know, that you give and it's greatly appreciated, the gesture. Mm -hmm. So, just pull the love up from source and Smile like an idiot, you know, send your love down to self. And we ask source for a lot of mercy so that connection can even become stronger, more permanent. And now, of course, you're going to take advantage here and ask absolute source you know, to clear, you know, any resistances. You know, in us towards, of course, source, but then also about enjoying our life. You know, not hedonism, but, you know, just uh, source will show you. <laughs> you know, let him surprise you. You know, we give permission. And we also ask, please, to heal. To help us forgive, you know, past wrongs, you know, in us and others. Please, 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 pretty, 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 please. This can your time. And then we also ask him to pretty please, you know, to show us, you know, ways, you know, to enjoy, you know, higher dimensional love. I'm definitely not, you know, talking about pole dancing here. And to also to help us, you know, to access that strength from the inside, you know, from source. To help us to take shelter there. You know, to manifest the ideal. And we also ask that he helps us maybe to help our friends and fellow life forms. You know, not that we are just, you know, serving everybody else all the time. No, it's, you know, uh, you know, but that if it's, if it comes easy, why not? You know, if you have plenty and it doesn't, you know, if it's just a smile, or just a good word, whatever it is that we have lots of, why not, please, help us, help us, help us, and let us experience the bliss of helping others. And also, you know, Source and Lord Shiva, you know, please, please clear any outdated, distorted concepts you know, regarding all these issues. You know, bring in the new and better concepts. You know, food and downloads, dreams, fun realizations, you know, teachers, informations, YouTube, books, observation in nature. Help us to walk in love, strength, to wisdom.
smile, breathe deeply. And we thank all those beings that have been here guiding and protecting us. Thank Source, Lord Shiva, all the heavens, all those good guides, our own high self. We ask that all our subtle bodies be updated and that these en beautiful energies that they be sealed and locked in so they cannot be stored or contaminated by any dark beings. And we ask that we be surrounded, you know, by this beautiful force field that keeps us protected from negative intent, dark energies and information, misdirections. And that reflects and rejects negativity, but brings in love and light. They can only be penetrated by love and light. And once this is established, we ask that this be locked in for our highest good in divine harmony with the most modern outcomes. Amen. And one, two, three, you're back in vacant day consciousness again. Wow, I did not expect this. So, um, yeah, so I've been crying, so this is kind of out of love. That was beautiful. You know, we can cry out of pain, out of love. You know, crying just means a very, very strong emotion. You can cry out of anger. And also, sometimes when we release pain, you know, we cry there too. Uh, this happens when a lot of love is present, then deep, stuck pain, you know, can be recleared and released. So that's why I'm keeping this in here. You know, this will happen to you sooner or later too. I just go with it. It's good. It feels so good. It's so purifying. So, um, well, if you want to show gratitude, you know, uh, give comments, subscribe, you know, give me a thumbs up, you know, so other people have access to the information, you know, get a good YouTube algorithm. But then for yourself, you know, drink a lot of water, you know, it's about a quart or a liter of water. And if you get any headaches, well, you got to drink more water. You know, there's a lot of purification going on. So you got to be detoxing, you know, big time. And, well, I mean, if you responded well to this guided meditation, you will probably want to try my other meditations, you know, or if you can afford it. And I'm not that expensive. You know, I'm very reasonably priced. You know, get a personal session with me. Um, just send me an email, and I will, you know, send you the, all the necessary information. Mm -hmm. So, I love you, you know, and I will see you again. 
Namaste.